Alright everyone, welcome back. I'm Tonberry Pond. This is episode 3 of my playthrough of Fatal Frame 5, Made in the Blackwater. Seems like we might be going through uh, an episode... an episode. So that's pretty cool. Postmortem Photography. Ren Hojo. Hojo! Rui. It's really morbid. She's beautiful, but she looks sad, too. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't she the type of woman that you get nervous around? Yeah. Total, total beta. Yeah. There may be more of this stuff out there. Shall I call Hasoka? No, let's go there ourselves. It'll be quicker that way. <coughs> it won't take long. So then, shouldn't you take the camera obscura? You haven't used it yet. This could be your chance. People say there's something off about that place. There's okay. legends about all types of stuff about that place. Measure. Memorial portraiture? The act of photograph uh, photographing dead bodies was a practice in Western uh, countries in the 19th century, a time when photography was still a rare and expensive luxury. The bodies of recently deceased family members and loved ones were photographed in lifelike poses as a solemn keepsake of remembrance. While researching the phenomenon, I discovered that a sim <coughs> similar custom was made uh, made its way to Japan as well. Known as postmortem photographs, a small number of these photos re still remain. I have been fortunate enough to obtain one such photograph, which I found to contain a certain beauty lacking in its western counterparts. When photography first arrived in Japan, it was accompanied by the prevalent superstition that photographs could steal a person's soul. Whether anyone truly believed this or not, it, sh <coughs> it, surely, uh, it surely gave postmortem photography a special significance in Japan. If photos were taken with this belief in mind, the postmortem photographs would not simply have been taken as keepsakes or for, the mor or for mourning purposes. Rather, the practice may have carried a certain deeper spiritual significance. To Ren Hojo, the camera you left me uh, <coughs> to look at is a device known as the Camera Obscura. Its purpose is to capture images and supernatural things invisible to the naked eye. These cameras are incredibly rare, with an uh, uh, almost mythical status in the antiques market. A few have been known to exist, but this is the first I've ever seen with compound lenses. I don't mean to frighten you, but rumor holds it that the Camera Obscura <coughs> is to invite misfortune. To own one is to invite misfortune. They say everyone who has owned one has either died, lost their mind, or gone missing. Here, present for you. The cameras themselves have outlived many owners. While some aficionados do seek them out, the stories of previous owners meeting with such a misfortune 
has had an impact on their value as antiques. My camera obscura was left to a local family after its previous owner passed away. They graciously gave it to me. I believe yours is still usable, please, but please do exercise caution in doing so. Sincerely, Hisoka Kurosawa. P.S. The cover on your camera obscura is broken, but it seems uh, it originally had a box shape. Box shape. I doubt you'll send it to me. You know, I doubt... I doubt you'll sell it to me, but I would like to borrow it for a while if you don't mind. I am happy to compensate. Please think it over. What have we here? Across this book while researching on Akami. The Maiden Slayer. The Maiden Slayer. Mahakami has long been steeped in legends revolving around suicide and ghosts. Revered as a sacred place since time immemorial, it was once the worshipping ground and home of many shrine maidens. Once there was a man who fell in love with a maiden and came to the mountain in order to court her. However, she remained loyal to her duties and, refo and refused his advances. Enraged, a man killed her and threw her into the river. Bingo! <clears throat> that sounds like a final boss right there. Several days later, he returned with a torch and blade and proceeded to brutally butcher all the shrine maidens on the mountain, tossing them into the river as he went. The waters of the mountain flowed red with blood, carrying the slaughtered corpses of the maidens all the way down to the pool of purification. It is said that the eyes of each of the shrine maidens had been gouged out. Just before killing the first maiden and tossing her into the river, the man's eyes met with those of his victim. Something in her eyes led him to murder the others, or so the legend goes. With all the maidens dead, he killed himself by cutting his own throat. The ghosts of shrine maidens still drenched in those blood, uh, bloodied waters have appeared on the mountain ever since. <clears throat> it is said that those who meet their eyes are led to their deaths. They follow the women into the water and drown themselves. Though only a legend, the story is believed to be based on an actual incident. Local records show that the bodies of several shrine maidens were discovered long ago, and that all rituals and rites ceased to be performed from that day on. Rui's Journal Mr. Hojo can't clean up after himself. For someone who's lived alone for so long, he's incapable of housework. He can't cook, and he's bad at tidying up. <laughs> I'm more like a caretaker than his assistant. He loses things all the time, and whenever he doesn't have a book he needs, he blows up. He blows up. He usually ends up asking Mrs. Kurosawa for help. One time when I was trying to sort out, sort all his books, excuse me, I had a very big dinner. There was one I couldn't find anywhere. It's like it just disappeared. Miss Kurosawa found it with her shadow reading. She went into his room on her own, then came back out a little while later with the missing book. She just smiled and said something about making the invisible visible. What is this shadow reading business anyway? <clears throat> that reminds me of that one time. I was tidying up and came across something I'd never seen before. It was like Ms. Kurosawa said, the invisible became visible. It was kept inside an old box. I don't even know what it was. I put it, I put it aside to sort out later on. But when I went to take a proper look, it had vanished. It must have gone invisible again. It's almost sunset. We should hurry. Yeah, let's go. The damn There's mountain. a local superstition warning people not to go up Mount Hikami after dusk. If you climb the mountain in the twilight hours. It'll show you a different form. It's true form. Only those who wish to die come here at that time. <coughs> I think that's the inn where the album was found. 
This must be Ichiru Manor. So, do you think you'll be able to use the camera obscura? I think you should try it out first, just to be sure. Okay. Nice. Ah, I see. <laughs> well, you look like you, so yeah. I hear the older part of this inn, the part that's further back inside, it was part of some temple or shrine. After it became an inn, the proprietor's family lived here, but it doesn't look like anyone was a massive a landslide that hit Mount Hikami. Maybe they were all buried under the rubble. Hey, it looks like the album you asked for was found in the old building. Yeah, sure looks that way. Creep, so creepy, so creepy. Alright. Oh my god, that's not cool. It must have been the wind. Health, yeah. Oh, it's a bad guy. That's all she wrote. Why won't you die? <clears throat> oh, I should have checked the ghost finder thing. There might not be anything in here. Oh, the head of that thing is looking the other way now. That's so creepy, so creepy. Damn it. Alright. Hmm. 
This must be the room where Hisoka found that album. Yeah, it seems so. Crumbled note, note. How long has it been since I lost everything? The mountain swallowed up half my inn. All I have left is that old album of postmortem photographs, the one left by my father. <clears throat> I don't even know who's uh, who these photos are of, but it's the last uh, vestige. Vestige? I don't know. A family I have. How long have I spent here, wallowing in darkness, in the darkness? It doesn't matter. I'll burn it all, and then, and and then, there will be, <coughs> there will only be me. I think I'll end it up, and I think I'll end it up. It's a weird sentence. I think I'll end it up in the observation room on the roof. So, we'll, I guess he's talking about suicide. End it all, maybe is the proper phrasing. Alright, hold on. Let's see if there's anything over here. Nope. Oops, wrong way. Come on, homie. What the fuck? She doesn't seem too happy. Oh shit. Where the fuck is she? There we go. Get wrecked. Why won't you die? All right. Oh shit! Ah, oh, I missed him. According to the stories, after the landslide, the owner of the inn moved to the third floor. Ooh, treasure. And they say he burned himself to death. Oh, I can't get there. Or that he threw himself into the lake. I'm calling in that story. Tell me about it. Since then, they say that if you look up at the third floor veranda, you'll see someone looking back down. Really? I'm sorry. Get some good film. Decent film, I guess. One step above terrible. There's a hole there. Can't cross that. Ghost is telling me to go there. Oh, more film.
in here though. Whole lot of nothing. Oh wait a second. I see a something back there. Alright, more health. See. Why in the fuck does it keep doing that? What is it reacting to? I think I saw this the last time. Messy note number two. Even before the landslide, there were always strange goings on here. Some years ago, two girls went missing on a college field trip. The police were stumped. A few days later, one of the girls turned up again, seemingly out of her mind. There were lots of theories, but most people believe they were simply spirited away. That girl came back each year to look for her friend like some sort of pilgrimage. Countless people have gone missing here over the years. We're all used to it by now. My father was spirited away too, <clears throat> as was the folklorist K.G. Watari. Alright, next next it'll be my turn, I bet. I'll vanish with the rest of them. I doubt anyone will think to come looking for me. This way? I can't remember. No. Wait, I think it's around the corner, right? Nah, it's back a ways. My bad, bro. Damn, he's slow. Come on, buddy. Yeah, here we go. to see my photographs. Ah, oh, shit, I think I missed one.
Let's try this. Hopefully it works. There we go. It's back at an angle. <coughs> so creepy, so creepy. My hand's definitely getting grabbed, I bet. Aw. Oh. Oh shit. I don't want to help you. Get off my buddy. They sound terrible when they pass on. Uh oh. Got me some medicine. Oh, I'm going the wrong way again. Whoopsie daisy. I didn't do shit. That's so weird. Come on, man. <clears throat> what is going on? Of course. The AI is pretty stupid. <clears throat> Am I getting hurt right now somehow? This 
is one tough ass ghost. This place has gone from a tourist hotspot to a suicide hotspot, but I suppose that was always the case. This mountain of, and death go together side by side. Mikamori was once known as the Grove of Shrine Maidens, <coughs> a sacrifice, uh, uh, sacred grove where the mountain's maidens oversaw the deaths of pilgrims, easing their passing to the other side. I like that. I envy it. I wish someone would uh, be there to see me off. It's so sad. All these people are super miserable. Yes, I'm fine. I heard it and then I saw it. It was like, ah. that shit was creepy. Someone leaped to their death from the top of the building, I guess. Excuse me. I'm on the wrong side. here you got a mirror stone black stone that emits a mysterious light it can if you run out of health it will protect you cool Sunset beckons. It's calling me into the water. This is the right thing to do. Okay. <sighs> totally sucks. What's in the corner here? There was a fire. This must be where the innkeeper moved. <clears throat> Phantom expose. Or expose, whatever. He's into something now, too. <clears throat> no, don't touch it! Don't touch it! Really? Oh my gosh! 
No way. That is messed up. Don't do it, kid. Rui! What's wrong? He's... he's oh, he's no. Get hurt. Strongest film I got. Shit. What? Come get it. Sounds terrible. What the fuck? Shit, wrong button. Shit. Fuck, that sucks. Come on, man. That's eh, so creepy. Swinging by her neck like that. Oh! Watch. Mixed out on that fatal frame, too. I'm getting impatient. Leave my friend alone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it takes a long ass time to reload. What were you doing? Can't you remember anything? Let's go home. Oh my god. I'm thinking we run. Oh, dude, I don't like this one bit. Alright, so it's at the start of the spin. That was close. Come on now. Scary, scary. What did I do? I wasted it. Run. Oh 
shit. Where'd she go? Oh my god. Oh, I did it again. Hit the wrong damn button. Kind of nice having that though, so that way, if you're off the fatal frame, you still get a couple chances to get it. It's pretty. It's pretty decent. The album Postmodem Photograph is assembled by a folklorist who lived on the mountain. His name was K.G. Watarai. Uh, he, came, he became a f uh, fascinated by the custom and moved to Mount Akame to study how it spread through Japan. My father seemed to take an interest in these photos as well. Strange foreign customs always fascinated him. While he was running the inn, he helped Watari, or Watarai uh, collect postmodem photographs from the nearby town. On Mahakami, water itself was defiled. Oh, oh no, deified. My bad. Uh, it seemed like Watarai wanted to get a deeper understanding of this unique outlook, so he set up a house in the forest to experience it firsthand. He was greatly aided by my father, who had already set up the end by that point. He remodeled it from an old, unused shrine. I think he thought the extra religious heft would help attract more visitors. One day, the folklorist went missing. Several people formed a search party, but they were unable to find a trace. Hmm. Even the roads to his house seemed to have been lost to the woods. That's weird. My father sc uh, scoured the mountain too, but all he found was the photo album. He was soaking wet when he got back. I remember he was acting strangely. His eyes had this curious glint, almost like he'd been possessed by something. The next thing I knew, my father went missing as well. I'd forgotten about the photos until I found them in the old building after the landslide. But now I understand why my father left Wat Watarai too. These photos are so beautiful. <laughs> so he got sucked up into it as well. Crazy, crazy. Alright, well that's the end of episode 3. Actually got an S rank on this one. Moving on up. Alright guys, I'm Tom Berry Pond, and I'll see you in episode four. Later guys. <laughs>